Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Break. Last year we hosted GB Compo 23, which was a Game Boy homebrew game jam. For those of you that don't know, game jams are basically events where developers get together and build a game in a certain amount of time. The rules for this competition were that the developers had three months in order to make a Game Boy or a Game Boy Color game that can be played on original hardware. The theme for the jam was You Are the Monster, and there was 80 entries in the end. And I along with a panel of other Game Boy enthusiasts as judges, went through those 80 entries and narrowed the list down to the top 15 that I'll be sharing with you all today. So we ranked each game based on five categories, gameplay, technical, originality, audio, and theme. And for those categories, we ranked them from a score of one to five for each. We then combined everyone's results to give you the list that you can see now and decide on the top three who actually won cash prizes too. So although I won't be sharing my personal scores, I do have the aggregated scores of all the judges combined and I will be showing those along with each of the games. So with that said, let's get started with game Game number 15, which was called Lightseeker. It's a dungeon crawler with some great mechanics and a really interesting premise. It starts out with a little story sequence explaining that an ancient being was awoken and the world burned. The survivors fled underground and they're forced to survive deep beneath the earth. The game sees you exploring these caverns to try and stay alive. You can find or buy rations to stave off the starvation and use currency that you get from defeating the monsters to buy new weapons. When you die, you get to keep any loot that you found, allowing you to save up to buy by stronger weapons and try to make it even deeper next time. The game at this point in time though is quite basic with some awkward movement and hit detection and it didn't seem to have anything to do with the theme of the jam either. But the premise is definitely solid and the atmosphere in particular is outstanding. And thankfully the developer is still actively working on the game so if you want to see more of this game and to see where it goes in the future check the description for a link to their itch.io page. So Lightseeker got an overall score of 2.67. Number 14 is a game called Imperium Strike Force. This was a really interesting one. This was actually a tribute to the original Game Boy game Mercenary Force, which was then reimagined for the Game Boy Color and based on the Warhammer 40k universe. The most impressive thing about this entry though was the fact that it was all made in the final four weeks of the jam. It's only a short demo, but what is here shows a lot of promise. For those of you that that don't know how Mercenary Force plays. You control this squad here and you can press a button to change into different formations, enabling you to attack the enemies in different locations and navigate the scrolling environment. The original game is somewhat of a hidden gem on the Game Boy and this is a great reimagining of it too. Unfortunately, again, it didn't really fit the theme and it does feel quite unpolished, but considering it was all made in four weeks, it is an amazing achievement, so congratulations. And overall, the combined rankings gave Imperium Strike Force a score of 2.69. And now on to the next game. The next one is a game called Exterminator, and this was kind of a weird one. In some ways it reminded me of a NES game, especially the way the sprites were scaled. It reminded me of something like Chippendale on the NES. The concept is that you play as an exterminator and you have to go into this house and get rid of rats. Again, I don't really think it fits the theme at all and it was very difficult, but it was very competently programmed. And as you explore this house and try to find the rats to jump on, sometimes a person walks in and if you touch him, you die and the game resets. I wasn't very good at it and it's something that I would like to try and play again in the future. Hopefully the developer decides to keep working on it because these graphics and the game play that goes along with it could be really good in a full featured game. So in the end, Exterminator got an overall score of 2.83. And now onto the next game called Slayer the Hawk. Number 12 was a game called Slayer the Hawk. When I first booted this one up, I was amazed at the awesome parallax scrolling effects on show here. The game was written entirely in C, and this is a really impressive showcase of what the Game Boy hardware can do. Again, it's a very simple game. You control this hawk here and fly around killing everything you see, and that's literally all there is to it. But aside from the simplicity, it is a really cool technical showpiece, and that is why it got an overall score of 2.86. 
Eleven is a game called Abducted. This one is actually a very unique entry. This is actually a 3D dungeon crawler. Reading the developer's itch.io page for this one was quite interesting. It was built in GB Studio, but the developer actually created a first person plugin engine for the game, and the result is very impressive. There's not that much gameplay at this stage, but it's an impressive tech demo once again. A lot of the plans for the game, such as the music or the story, weren't actually able to be implemented in time for the jam. It sounds like the developer is still working on the project though. So again, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, check their page in the description below. And overall, Abducted got a score of 2.94. Number 10 was a game called Hidden Gems. This was another game that didn't adhere to the gems theme, but this one is a really cool puzzle game in which you have to combine different gems in order to remove them from the board. And after getting to grips with the game, thanks to the really great in-game tutorial, I actually had a lot of fun playing this, and it kind of got me thinking that puzzle games are the perfect kind of game for the Game Boy. They just fit that form factor so well, and this is actually a really interesting game in that genre. And this was the first one to score above a 3, this one overall got 3.06. Number 9 is a game called Slime Trials, and this one definitely adhered to the theme because in this game you play as a basic slime enemy. And what I loved so much about this one was the fact that it's actually a grapple platformer, and I am a massive fan of grapple platformers, so it was really cool to see one executed so well on the original Game Boy. It is a very difficult game, in fact it kind of plays into that Super Meat Boy mentality where dying is actually part of the game experience, and when you do get to the end of the game, it actually tells you how many lives you took to get there. So here's my score at the end of the game. Check the game out in the description below and let me know whether you managed to beat it or not. And in terms of the score, this one got 3.06 as well, but how we ranked them was actually based on the theme category because we felt that would make the most sense for the jams. So this one in the end came out just ahead of Hidden Gems, but they are both great games in very different ways. Next up was a really interesting themed pirate RPG. This is called Chanty, and this was actually just a prologue to a much bigger game that the developer has in mind for the future. This one is a very promising top-down adventure. You play as a pirate in the early 1700s, and the interesting thing here is that you find people to join in with song battles. And the game changes from a top-down RPG to a rhythm game similar to something like Beat Mania, with notes coming down from the top of the screen. The timing and the gameplay of these sections does need some polish, but it's a very unique concept. And as you can see, the graphics are just amazing. Some of the best that I've seen so far. With a more fleshed out full game and more time to set up the premise, this one could be something truly special. So keep an eye out on the developer's itch.io page for more information coming soon. And this one got a score of 3.25. Next up was Kaiju Kai Kai, and I loved this one. It was the perfect concept to match the theme. You play as this cute kaiju monster and take part in several fun mini games. Having the graphics so big on the screen sounds like it was quite the challenge for the developer. The monster was created on a background layer with a lot of tile swapping going on to make it stable. And the background and foreground graphics were made using the remaining sprites. The result is fantastic and hopefully this game continues development after the jam is over as this is definitely one that I can see becoming a full game with a really fun bunch of mini games. And overall, this one got a score of 3.33. Number six was another minigame collection, but quite a different one. This one is called Ghost of the Arcade. So this one's got a quite interesting premise. You actually end up dying at the start of the game, and then you actually go around haunting the arcade machine and trying to get high scores on all of the various games in the arcade. The minigame concepts themselves are all fun and engaging, and it's a great showcase of the vastly different game genres that GB Studio can create. Unfortunately, I found it very difficult to beat some of the scores, so I never got to the end of this one, but what was here seems like it could be really great if the developer puts in a little bit more time into the balancing and the polish of the game. This one got a score of 3.42. And now we're down to the top five, and number five is a game called Nonya. This one is an action platformer where you play as a nun with a shotgun going down into dungeons beneath the town. It's a fun, straightforward platformer with some great graphics and music, and an interesting hub area and premise as well. The controls did feel a little slippery, but the developer has let me know that they're working on fixing that very soon. Overall, this is an awesome game, and well deserving of a spot in the top five. And this one got a score of 3.58. 
Number four is a game called The Host, and this is a really cool puzzle platformer where you play as a monster who can take over and control humans. You can use this to navigate the different levels and find your way to the exit. The levels get very challenging later on in the game with some really cool designs. It also has some nice options to make the game a little bit more accessible, including an easy mode which features the ability to skip levels if you're stuck, and the ability to decide which sections of the levels that you want to play from the main menu before you begin. Overall, this one got a score of 3.58. Now for the final three games. Number three was a game called Enceladus. This one is easily one of the most impressive games, not just from this competition, but from any Game Boy Homebrew game that I've seen. And this was actually my personal pick for the best of the bunch. First off, the graphics and the atmosphere are just second to none. The game plays out like a simple Metroidvania, so you explore this space station and you find upgrades to be able to explore more of the ship. The gameplay could do with some improvements. The platforming physics, like a lot of games created using Game Boy Studio, are a little slippery and the jumping felt a little unnatural, but even with those small issues, this is definitely one of the best games that has come from the competition and I really hope we get to see a full release of this one. If this early prototype is anything to go by, it's going to be something very special indeed, so keep an eye out. This one got a score of 3.75. Two left now, and number two was a game called Feed It Souls. This one was actually another very impressive Metroidvania style platformer. This one reminded me a lot of the old cinematic platformers like Flashback or like the Oddworld series. Again, being a GB Studio platformer, the platforming controls themselves and the physics can be a little bit frustrating, but again, the developer has done everything at their disposal to make this as much of a well-polished and atmospheric platforming adventure as they could. It has a really unique setting and lots of challenging areas to explore, and I can't wait to see more from this one too. This one got a score of 3.92. And the final game here with a score of four. This one is called Hermano, and this was definitely the most polished of the bunch. This one brings to mind classic games like Castlevania, Kid Dracula, or Ghosts and Goblins, among others, and this is easily the most polished of the games on display here. The game plays really well with nice big sprites and none of the physics issues of earlier entries either. The levels are all just the right length and the range of enemies and obstacles is very impressive considering the time constraints of the jam. A worthy winner of the competition for sure, and one of the best platformers on the system. I really can't wait to see how this grows into its full release. So Pat Morita team, congratulations and well done on winning GB Compo 2023. And thank you everyone who submitted games to the competition and who watched and enjoyed this video as well. Let me know down in the comments below which of these games you liked the most and if you want to play all the entries in the competition then check the link in the description where I'll actually link you to the itch.io page with all 80 submissions so you can make your own minds up too. Hopefully some of you watching will decide to take part in the next competition coming in 2025 and once again I'll be a judge for that along with a lot of other friends in the community so we all really hope that you'll take the time to join in the competition next year and finally if you want to see my judging process of all 15 of these games in a nearly six hour video then check the description and the pinned comment because I actually recorded the entire thing and if you want more Game Boy homebrew goodness to watch here on YouTube then click the playlist up here I've done loads of videos in the past about loads of really cool games so thank you so much and I'll see you all again very soon goodbye